Field Trips features real field stories told by real ASCE members. Hello everyone, my name is Nina Stark and I'm an associate professor with a research focus on coastal marine geotechnics. So what I typically do is I go out in the field and most of my data collection is actually in the field or based on samples that we collected in the field. And we are testing seabed or riverbed sediments, either in situ, so in place, or we are collecting samples and test them later in the lab. Uh, we also often work with geophysical methods like sonars underwater or LIDAR in emerged environments or even with satellite images. So you can see that I'm currently, unfortunately, not in the field, but in my office. But I'm joining you guys today to talk about a, a field trip that I did a couple of years ago. And just to take uh, away already the intention of the story, the story is really about improvising in the field and the fact that you can and you should plan as much as you can. But then there's always still changes that, that come to you and that are out of your control. And you may have to improvise or make decisions based on that. And then you will have to live with these decisions. Um, and hopefully you made the decisions that gives you the, the best outcome. So in this case, we had a field experiment in Alaska in a location where I've been uh, multiple times before. In fact, it's a very wave energetic environment. And that's also the reason why we wanted to, to work there. We were specifically interested in measuring pore pressures under wave action. So we would deploy pressure sensors in the beach phase and to different cross shore locations. So at different distances to the shoreline and to the berm. And during low tide, we would auger practically holes into the ground, place the sensors along pipes, typically in the vertical stack, and then we would have multiple of these stacks across the beach. And so we have done that many times before at the same location as well as other locations. And what we would always do is actually connect these different stacks or these different pipes with a rope or a chain that would serve like a safety line and that we would then connect to the all the way onshore to a tree or another anchoring object that we placed there. We do not like to put anchors practically under the pipes for the reason that then we have to dig bigger holes and disturb the sediment more. So the, the goal is to disturb the sediment as little as possible and then rather have a safety uh, chain that goes up the, up the beach in locations where we are not so concerned about digging around. So that was the plan here too. Additionally to that, there was an educational component. So we actually had eight undergrad students plus some of my grad students in the field. And I mentioned the undergrad students specifically because we had a couple of students with us who have never been really in the field. And some of them have never been in a location like this. So that is obviously something you have to consider when you manage your team, but also have to make decisions if you have to make decisions about how the team functions and what tasks you're doing in the field. So you can only deploy the sensors in this way during low tide. And on the day of the deployment, low tide was kind of late in the day, about 10 p.m. ish, what is not really much of an issue in summer in Alaska since you have long light. So we went out there fairly late and started working on that. So suddenly someone noticed some rustling in the bushes behind the berm. And indeed there was a brown bear sitting in the bushes or just arrived and started eating strawberries. So that is also not really surprising. And in fact, we have been uh, prepared for somewhat of bear encounters by uh, having bear spray with us. Uh, we talked to a wildlife ranger before, um, as well as uh, making sure that practically the bear is not getting somewhere between us and our vehicles, that we could uh, always get back to the vehicle easily uh, in case the bear would come closer. So we keep working based on this. However, some of our team members didn't really feel comfortable. So we had to reshuffle tasks a little bit and some students uh, stayed rather close to the, to the car, what also led to the fact that we actually got slowed down a little bit. So at that point, I actually checked the weather forecast and the wave forecast to if it's still worth it, is it still worth getting the sensors out? And indeed, I saw the wave conditions are predicted perfectly, just really big enough to have this really interesting data set, but, but still gentle enough that I was not too concerned about the sensors. And for that reason, I'm actually said, well, you know, over all these years, we have never lost a stack. Um, this, the safety line never had a job to do. It was always just there for safety. 
So in the interest of speeding up things and making it easier and it's getting dark and our uh, and we still have the bear here and the bear may be moving soon, let's skip the safety line. So that was a decision I made there in the interest of uh, making it easier on the team and, of course, also for safety considerations, since I certainly would not want to get into the situation that we, we get into a dusky condition uh, uh, with a bear being around. So decisions made, we're placing the sensors, we are going back to the car, we are leaving, bear is still sitting in the strawberries, but no problem. However, then in the middle of the night, I wake up uh, from really loud raging wind and rain, and of course, these big wave conditions and moderate light stormy conditions turn into a pretty decent storm, and with a decent storm, also the waves picked up quite significantly. And at that time, I was like, ah, okay, so I hope that this one time that I didn't use the safety line, you know, it's not leading to a loss because suddenly the waves picked up so much. But of course, uh, how things go, uh, we went to the beach next day and we lost, in fact, 50% of the sensors we placed. Uh, they were washed out. The wave conditions just got too big. And without the safety line, you may argue with the safety line have held it. Probably it would. But uh, since it was not attached, we lost these sensors. So now you may say this is a failed experiment, but it actually was not. I still feel I would do the same decision again. And why is that? First of all, I felt good about my team safety at all times. Everyone was comfortable despite the situation that we had wildlife around us and everyone was excited to get the sensors out and we did get some, some data. And we not only got some data, we actually, the remaining sensors got some amazing data to the level that you may even argue the, the worth of this data is probably at least as much as the sensor loss we, we, uh, uh, we, we saw. And then later there was another component to, to this. So we actually talked to the community and told them about the sensors that we lost. And the next day, amazingly, a lot of people were at the beach helping us, looking for the sensors. We never found them, but actually it, it created a new connection to the community. It created new opportunities to talk to the community. Not that I'm suggesting lose your sensors to do some outreach, but sometimes out of bad things, th good things can come around. So as a morale of the story, field work always brings surprises and changes in conditions. You make the best decisions uh, that you can and then you probably do good. So thanks everyone for listening. I hope you enjoyed this little story and I hope you to see you guys in the field sometime. Field Trips is a production of ASCE and the Geo Institute.